This is what happens when Republicans have a supermajority in the legislature. In North Carolina, they are pushing through a bill that will require sheriffs to work with federal immigration officials. The bill cleared the House in 2023 and will require sheriffs to check the immigration status of people charged with felonies or serious misdemeanors. It stalled in the Senate last year, but the Chamber's Judiciary Committee recently approved it. A full Senate vote could come later this week. Democratic sheriffs in the state say it's more harmful to public safety if they work with immigration and customs enforcement agents. Gary McFadden is the sheriff in Mecklenburg County. He's been quite vocal about his opposition to helping ICE. He joins us now from Charlotte. Uh, sheriff McFadden, glad to have you here. So first, for you, what is the main reason why you do not want to work alongside or help ICE? Well, let me first explain. Thank you so much, my brother, for having me. Mm -hmm. We do cooperate with ICE. Here's what happens. North Carolina General Statute 162.62 mandates every sheriff in North Carolina to work with ICE. So we actually do. We contact them. We tell them where the, the, uh, the individual is. But the last one hurts them. We cannot hold someone in custody after a judge signs their order for us to release them. So they just don't like the, the last part of that law that mandates every sheriff in North Carolina to work with ICE. And so a detainer is not signed by a judicial official and have no probable cause. A detainer is simply a document that an ICE agent signs with no authorization from any judicial official to hold that person in custody. So the previous sheriff left that on the table. We got sued. We paid $80,000 to get out of that lawsuit, which we did not win. But then we're going to ask them, why, why don't you implement two laws that ICE has on the books but simply that they want because they want to put the burden on the sheriff. But we are mandated by law to cooperate with ICE to a certain point. So, um, again, what you have, this is a perfect example of how Republicans don't really like local control for things that they don't agree with. And so you, you are duly elected by the voters in Mecklenburg County. The when first you, black sheriff in Mecklenburg County. And when you run, you explain to the public how, how it was you were going to govern in the county. Here Absolutely. You, here you have Republicans saying, yeah, we don't like the choices that you're making, which the voters approve, so now we're going to force you to do our bidding. And that's what they're doing. They actually call us the woke sheriffs. And of course, I had to come back with that. And so they dance around it. I said, why don't y'all talk about the black sheriff? Because eight black sheriffs took over the entire state of North Carolina in one election. We did not know each other at the time, but we came together. And of course, they have picked one of us two off. But the majority of us are still here running the largest cities in North Carolina. And my city is the largest. Uh, let's just be real clear. Uh, it's some other words they want to use when they say what? Well, they, well, they said they, they'll tell you that I was at a meeting and somebody said and I said, if you say it, do not turn your head. And of course, they asked us to leave the meeting, and we did, but we were still outside saying what we want to say. The issue is that black America has to stand up for black America, and if they don't, we are going to be bamboozled as we've always been. I'm not afraid, and that's something that they have never seen, and, I'm, and I, I don't fear anyone. And I speak vocally about this, and I will continue to speak voc vocally about it. They didn't like when I, we do not call my detention center a jail. We call it a detention center, and I do not call the people who are housing my facility inmates. They are the residents. So things like that, they just don't like. The good old boys just don't like what we're saying and what we're doing. And so they gather their troops together to push this down our throat. So um, you just described something that took place. <laughs> they lost, you lost money. Oh, yes, and sir. so, and again, and uh, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, did the state send you 80 grand to cover the bill? Absolutely not. See, here's why this is so important. Even though when ICE puts this detainer, thank you, my brother, because we have to educate America. Well, but give people knowledge. If they bring this person in on a detainer, if something happens in my facility, the judge is going to say, who authorized that person to be there? Not a judicial official. A judicial official is telling me to release this guy, and you are telling me to hold the guy. And so when we get sued, we'll bow ourselves again. 
But I thought these people call themselves fiscal conservatives. They say that. See, we have to be, we have to, we have to, <laughs> we can't live in fear anymore. And, and when we're talking about these positions, see, most of the people do not know this. The sheriff in every county, in every state, is the highest elected official. Not the mayor, not the city council, not the alderman. The sheriff is the highly elected official because he's elected by the people. Once we start teaching the people that, this is why you see more black sheriffs in Georgia, more black sheriffs in North Carolina, and of course, there are going to be more black sheriffs around the country because all of a sudden, most of the people realize where the power of judicial officials are, and that's with a duly elected sheriff. So um, this likely is going to pass. Uh, it's going to pass. And then what's going to happen next? Do you, because well, this is, I mean, the county, the, frankly, the, I mean, as, as a duly elected person, I mean, what, do you plan on suing the state? Well, somebody's going to probably sue the state. And somebody's going to sue us. We're going to get sued. No doubt about it, we're going to be sued. And then who's going to pick up that bill? I am on social media every day trying to make people understand this. You can let this happen if you want to. But you're, the, the cities and counties that this happens in, you're going to pay, you're going to pay the burden. You're going to be left with holding the baby, paying for the baby, and, and clothing and housing the baby. And that's what you're going to have to be doing. Um, you aren't the only black sheriff in the state, uh, but it, so it seemed as if uh, was happening in North Carolina, the targeting of black sheriffs. Same thing we see in Florida, the targeting of black district attorneys. Uh, again, they call progressive. They call woke. Uh, they want the, uh, they, the what they really want. They want the old boy law and order, lock them up, throw away the key, treat them like uh, crap, as opposed to treating people like human beings. Humanity. Inside my jail, we have a culinary school. We don't say jail. We have a culinary school. We have a barber school. Here last week, I graduated. Now, I know this sounds crazy. We have a business school called the Next Great 50. We have men and women with LLCs leaving here with a better credit score than they came in. I'm simply making our returning citizen better than they came. That's not what they want. They still want to hold us under the thumb of them. Let's make it clear. And so when they're talking about them and those and the woke, they're talking about the black sheriffs. And we have to wake up to that. They're talking about the black sheriff and they are targeting us. And here's an, and I'll send you the news article sitting at this table in Lexington, North Carolina, in August of 2022. They openly said their number one priority is to make those sheriff do what we ask them to do. Now, who's sitting around that table? Not one African-American sheriff. And who's sitting around that table? Local white sheriffs and white Republicans. And so they are open about it, but we are still sitting back nervous and scared to say what we want to say. We have to be bold, powerful, and black at the same time and live not in fear. We, we are fearful to say what's on our mind. We'll whisper at the church. We'll whisper in the car. We'll whisper at the social gathering. But when this happens on November 5th and all the other stuff happened on November 5th, America will change. We got to be bold, powerful, and black. I couldn't have said it better myself. That's it. Well, we Sh thank you all. Sheriff, I appreciate it. And look, one of the reasons... I'll drink, look, I'll drink to you on that one. Well, see right there. See, you, you, were, you were doing just fine there. See, I, just, I just had... My throat got... You know, itchy. You, you, you know, you, just, you, I, you, I just needed some you, water. You were, you were doing just fine there. See, see, Larry Walker, one of our panelists, he's a fellow Alpha brother. I don't know, I don't know why they, I don't know why they start this that Larry, but, but I, I keep, I don't know why they do that, but, but Sheriff, uh, just in case you forgot. <laughs> I, 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 I understand. I understand. I'm just. You are the beginning. Listen to what I'm saying. We understand the beginning. I, but but you, the beginning has happened. Jesus, we, we are the <laughs> Jesus was an alpha. Just want to let you know. Don't start. Don't start that. See, see, sheriff, you were doing just fine. But see, you and Megas always got to be extra. You always got to be a little extra. And see, you were do, you were doing just fine. You were getting a rating of ten out of ten. And then all of a sudden, can I can I get the nine back? I mean, and even if I get a nine, it'll be an upside down six. And then we talk about oh six. So I can't win. I can't win. OK, can't see, win. yeah, you yeah, you tr you trying you trying to get out that hole right now. See, I'm going to have to put I'm going to see right now. I'm going to put you in solitary confinement.
No, so, but please don't. <laughs> you know what? And listen, and, and you know what? You know what brand of tie this is? What's that? Verse nine. I just I just want you to know that this is this is a verse nine time. So don't play with me. Just 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 letting you know. It's for everybody. I, I, for everybody who's watching, I had a line of ties, ascots, and bow ties with verse nine. So I'm just so I'm the just share saying. the share trying to get some brownie points right now. No, no. I, you know I've been buying ties from Marty since he was selling out the trunk of the car. So I mean I just I understand I understand. But brother, uh, all right. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. But <laughs> well, well, I we appreciate it. To me. Appreciate it. Uh, keep us abreast on what's going on, uh, and we'll keep uh, sound the alarm. God bless you, brother. Stay black, stay bold. All day. I appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media for the creator economy. This next generation social media app with over 600,000 users is raising $17 million, and now is your chance to invest. For details on how to invest, visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits.